and now our platinum level sponsor, Bausch & Lomb, who has been platinum since we began, when since SNAP began four years ago. Thank you so much. Give a big round of applause to Bausch & Lomb, please. <laughs> And we have a new new contact with Bausch & Lomb. You guys, a lot of you met Scott Vitapo and John Mastrodonato, and they are no longer our contacts with Bausch & Lomb right now. So we have Rebecca Chandler. Rebecca, please raise your hand. This is our new contact with Bausch & Lomb. And when I told Rebecca of our meeting theme, she uh, helped me with my introduction for her. And we were able to incorporate that in. Just a little bit of information about Rebecca. She's been with Bausch & Lomb for six years. She lives in North Carolina with her two daughters and her husband. Since she's juggling so many balls all the time and works, fam works with her family, her goal is to learn to meditate so she can clear her mind. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca says I do yoga every day, but for the rest of the year, I'm going to commit to setting aside time each day to learn how to completely clear my mind. And that's one thing that John Zachary, Jay-Z, who will be speaking tomorrow, will talk about as well. This is a brand new concept for Rebecca. I can tell you from fellow mind on consistent person, good luck, oh, that was for me. <laughs> good luck with that. Everyone, please give a warm applause and help me welcome Rebecca Chandler with Bao Shalom. Thank you. So I decided to get really personal with my story because for the seminar that we're going to be presenting to you, I want, if this really, really speaks to you, I want you to commit to someone else about what you're going to do to change. So I told all of you in this big setting so you can help hold me accountable. Five minutes a day, clearing my mind completely so I can truly be there for all of you. I know you'll expect nothing less. So I want to introduce our speaker. We're so happy to have you. Um, all right, so years in independent practice before he decided to leave and devote all of his time to education, he is the editor of Review of Optometric what is it? Optometric business. Mm -hmm. All right. And he's also the faculty chair for the practice management portion of Ohio State University School of Optometry. Please help me welcome Dr. Mark Wright. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Give that to them on bike. We're good. All right. Thank you all very much. Good morning to everyone. And a clicker. Ah, down there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to talk about communication this morning. Communication is probably one of the most interesting things that we have to think about. I have the unique opportunity to stick my head in a lot of the uh, vendors, marketing departments in our profession. And, and I'm, I'm always interested that they almost all ask the same question. They ask the general public, what is it you want from your eye doctor? What do you think the number one and two answers are? Any, any ideas? Oh, hint. I want my doctor to clearly explain to me my diagnosis and my treatment plan. Now, Journal of, uh, of Medicine uh, did a study where they looked at malpractice cases and they found that doctors who don't clearly communicate are more at risk than doctors who do. So interesting studies have been done. They go out and they ask the doctors, what kind of a communicator are you? What do you think almost all the doctors say? We're the best, absolutely, we're the best. We clearly communicate everything we need to the patients that we see. And then they go ask the patients of those doctors, what kind of communicator is the doctor? What do the patients say? Yeah. Terrible, exactly right. They throw techno jargon at us, they, they load us up with so much information. By the way, do you agree with that, that we overload our patients with information by the time they lead our, leave our practices, our offices? Yeah, we do, we give them way too much information, make them make way too many decisions. So if we can learn to communicate better, then our time this morning should be very, very effective, very, very well spent. Now, Bosch & Lohm has, has kindly uh, uh, supported this meeting, so thank you very much. We appreciate that. Um, Bosch & Lohm is into innovation, and I think you're going to find innovative concepts being presented to you this morning in this presentation, concepts that you can take back to your practice and work with your staff to better communicate with each other and better communicate with your patients. So here are three things that we want to achieve this morning. These three things. One, understand how enhancing patient communication may have a positive impact on patient care and the practice. Number two, apply 
evidence-based communication techniques that may proactively uncover unmet patient needs and optimize the treatment experience. And number three, we want to make a plan for implementing these techniques in the practice. Help me with this. Is that a good 40 minutes to spend together, 30 minutes to spend together? We good? I got one yes here. All right. I got another one. All right. That's the journey we're going to go on. So let's start this journey together. First, we want to meet Kristen. Kristen is a typical patient. She's in her early 30s. She wears contact lenses to address astigmatism. She's an IT professional. So what does that mean in the real world? She's up close on digital devices all day long. What's the average amount of time the average patient coming into our practices is spending on digital devices? And by digital devices, I mean everything. Cell phones, tablets, and computers. Nailed it. Nine hours. Nine hours a day. That's up a lot. I went out to eat with my lovely wife the other night. It was a beautiful restaurant. We looked around the restaurant. Every single person in the restaurant had their cell phone out and was sitting there just tapping away. Cell phone usage has become, it's, it's part of life. I walk through my great room. There sits on my couch my son and at the time his fiance. And they're both sitting there. Both of them had their little phones out and they're just tapping away. And I walk through the room and then I stopped and I turned and I said, you're texting each other, aren't you? He said, well, of course we are. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, she's sitting right beside you. Turn and talk to her. The world has changed. The world is different. And the patients coming in and sitting in front of us are different. And so we need to make sure that we understand what those, what those differences are so that we can communicate clearly with them and effectively with them to help them move to where we want to go. So let's listen to a conversation between Kristen and her eye doctor. And this is a pretty typical conversation because I've sat in a lot of exam rooms from our, in our country from C to C and lakes to golf, and I can tell you that I've heard this exact conversation over and over again. So here we go. Let's listen to Kristen. It's been about a year since your last exam and your vision hasn't changed. I remember you mentioned a new job the last time we were here. How have things been going? Right. I had just started my job in IT before my last visit. It's going really well. I love working with new technology. Thanks for asking. That's great to hear. Do you have any questions about your vision? Not really. Everything has been good. Your contacts seem to be doing okay? Yeah, they're fine. Okay, that's great. I'll refill your prescription and look forward to seeing you next year. Okay, sounds great. Oh, what did we learn about Kristen? She said some very important words. She said to the question, how are your contacts? She said, they're fine. What does fine mean? Feelings I've not expressed. Anytime a patient tells you that something is fine, it's feelings I've not expressed. I, I want you to know, if I walk in the house and I say to my wife, how are things going? And she looks at me and goes, fine. I know I'm in trouble. I just immediately go, I'm an idiot. I apologize for whatever I've done. Please forgive me. I want you to stop and not accept fine as an answer from a patient. We want to start to drill down a little deeper. See if we can ask some questions that are a little more insightful to get patients to talk to us. So let's think about this. Do patients have needs that they don't always tell us about? The answer is absolutely they do. Patients often normalize suboptimal performance. They think that's the way it's supposed to be. My contacts are supposed to feel this way. When we know they aren't, but the patient doesn't tell us what's going on. They're reluctant to try something new if the patient is satisfied. And I gotta tell you, sometimes doctors are reluctant to try something new when patients are satisfied. I told you I get to stick my head in the marketing departments of a lot, of, and I told you there were two top answers. Number one was communication. You know, my doctor clearly communicated. You know what number two is? I want the newest technology. I want the newest technology. How many of you, when you go to, the, to, to get a new cell phone, you walk into the store and you go, hey, could you give me one of these cell phones like four or five generations back? Nobody does that. Everybody goes in and says, I want the new, what's that new iPhone? How much does that thing cost? It's like a thousand bucks, 999. Youch, and you know, people are gonna buy it because they want 
the newest technology? Are we providing for our patients the newest technology and talking to them about the fact that it is the newest technology? Because that's what they want to know. That's what they want to hear. That's where they need to go. And patients don't know what they don't know. They don't know what the options are that are available. It's our job to communicate those things to a patient. So, when patients benefit, we benefit. Let's go through a couple of these just to make sure that we understand. When the patient has a greater satisfaction with their eye care experience, it increases confidence in, in us. And that is a big, big deal. Number two, when patients feel like they're getting the best possible care, products, and experience, they're seeing us as offering the best possible care, products, and experience. They have increased confidence in the eye care professional and confidence in the quality of care, and that drives more satisfied patients and more positive word of mouth. Let's stop there for a second and think. What's the number one source of new patients to every single practice in this room? Word of mouth, you're exactly right. So anything that drives word of mouth should get our attention. Anything that increases that drives more new patients into our practice. We need to get our minds around that and think about that. So this is, a, this is what we're gonna achieve this morning. May I, I'll just grab this one. Does everyone have this little pamphlet in front of you? Open this thing up. Right here on page two. Here's the outline of what we're going to learn this morning. Number one, we want to uncover our patient's unique needs. Number two, we want to paint a picture of excellent vision. And number three, we want to prescribe a strong, relevant solution. Prescribe. Big word. Not offer, not suggest, not recommend. Use your doctor power. Use your white coat power. Prescribe a strong relevant solution. So that's our path. Keep this out. You're going to write on this. You're going to use this. I want you to take this back to your practice because when you do that, this is going to be the tool that you can work with each other and your staff and practice to improve performance across the board. Let's start with the first one, uncovering our patient's unique needs. We want to use targeted, open-ended. Open-ended means no yes and no answers. Targeted, open-ended questions that can help us gain an understanding of our patient's needs. It's going to help our patients open up and verbalize the challenges they have with their vision and their, and their contact lenses. Number two, we want to allow the patient to say so we can hear what's going on in their, wor in their world in their own words. That's really huge. And number three, uncover the unmet needs that could be addressed by... Who's sponsoring this meeting this morning? Bosch and Loam, a Bosch and Loam product, exactly right. Innovative products that have been created for us to use with our, with our patient care. We want to think that, that way through. So, how about this one? Open-ended, targeted question. How do your contact lenses feel at the end of the day? So you can't answer that with a yes or a no. You gotta, the patient's got to give us a little bit of context, a little bit of information. Here's another one. Walk me through a typical day and when you notice issues with your contact lenses feeling uncomfortable. Again, not a yes or no answer. Tell me about your day so I'm looking for those places where it breaks down. Number three, how many hours per day are you using digital devices and do you think that affects your vision? Do you get the, the fact? By the way, anybody in the room have a targeted, open-ended question that they like to ask patients that helps uncover those unmet needs? Somebody want to share one? Yes, ma'am. I usually ask, is there anything you'd like to change about your contacts? Oh, I love that. Is there anything you'd like to change about your contacts? A variation of that question is, if I gave you a magic wand and you could just wave that magic wand and make anything better about your contacts, what would that be? So there are many ways to ask that question, but that is such a powerful question because it gets patients to tell us unmet needs. I saw a hand somewhere else. Another question. Yes? Can you rate their satisfaction from 1 to 10? Oh, that's a great one. Rate your satisfaction with your contact lenses between 1 and 10. 1 the worst, 10 the best. And that opens up a discussion. Why did you choose 7? Right. What is it about that? How about this one? Do you take your contact lenses out at the end of the day because you want to or have to? Get where we're going? Again, opening up discussion with patients so they can talk to us. This kind of questioning is powerful. It doesn't take that much time to do this in the practice when you're with the patient, but it gives you invaluable information that helps you to move forward. So, targeted open-ended questions, 
And active listening responses. Active listening. Active listening is almost as important as the targeted questions. Active listening means I'm actually listening to what the patient's saying. How many of you have been thinking about answering the question before the patient finishes their answer? Have you ever done that? The patient starts to give you an answer and you interrupt them with the rest of what their answer is because you weren't actively listening. You wanted to respond. Have you ever watched two people talk to each other and they're talking past each other because they're each thinking about what I'm going to say next as opposed to what did you just say to me? I've watched that happen a lot. And so one of the things that we have to, a skill set we have to learn and practice is active listening. So we can actually listen to what the patient says and then repeat back to the patient what they told us so the patient understands that we actually heard them and understood them. Active listening. Number two, we've done the unmet needs. Let's now move to the second one, which is painting a picture of excellent vision for the patient. Facilitating a discussion with the patient that helps them envision the benefits of a change. It helps the patient visualize how making a change in their contact lenses may impact their vision. What was Einstein's definition of insanity? Anybody remember? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. The answer is if we have to get to a different result, we have to make a change. We want our patients to understand that and picture what that change could be like. Encouraging them to open up and discuss aspects of their lives and vision that are important to them. So here we go. Let's see if we can get some, some pictures of painting that perfect vision. How would you like to wear contact lenses that provide all day comfort? Now tell me. Is there a patient in this world who's told you, you know, I have to take my, my as soon as I get home from work, I got to take my contact lenses out because they're just uncomfortable. How would you like to wear all day comfort contact lenses? Isn't that patient going to jump on that? That's a picture that I want. Give that to me. Here's another one. What would it be like if you could experience clear vision and reduce the need for reading glasses? Experience clear vision and reduce the need for reading how many presbyopes in the room? We've crossed into that horrible disease, haven't we? <laughs> and, and we all know what that means, you know, what the, what the impact of that up-close vision is. How would you like to reduce the need of having to reach over for a pair of reading glasses? And the answer is yes. Patients want to talk about that. They want that, that picture for themselves. Now, Painting a picture of excellent vision is important because we're looking at forward-looking questions as opposed to historical questions which we ask in the first part of uncovering the problems in the patient's life. Now we're asking forward-looking questions that are related to overcoming the challenges in life that Kristen is facing. Imagining what excellent vision would look like. What would it be like if your lenses could feel comfortable all day so you didn't have to take them out as soon as you got home? So, third part, we've done the first on unmet needs. Second part, painting that picture. Third part here is prescribing a strong, relevant solution. Prescribing that. That gives a prescription that's relevant to the patient's needs. It gives a prescription that reinforces the rationale for the prescription. It offers the why behind the decision to prescribe this new thing for patients. Here we go, some words. See if you feel comfortable with these word sets. Based on what you told me, I'm prescribing Bosch and Loam Ultra for Astigmatism contact lenses because I am confident that it will make a difference for you. Do you feel comfortable saying that to patients? There are a couple of things here. One, we're prescribing, not offering, suggesting, or recommending. But two, we're prescribing brand-specific product. You okay with that? I'm going to tell you that's important. I think it's going to find that your patients respond positively to that, and it makes their confidence in you as a doctor increase. Here's another one. I appreciate you sharing this information with me. I'm prescribing Bosch and Loam Ultra for Astigmatism contact lenses to get you the results you're looking for and to fit your lifestyle. Now again, do you feel comfortable saying those words? Or again, you can make it your own. You can, you can change the words to make them yourself. Make them, make them come from your, your perspective. But the point is prescribing that strong, relevant solution and helping the patient understand why. 
Now, we listened to Kristen in the beginning. We heard this conversation with the doctor and Kristen where it was pretty superficial. We really didn't learn anything about Kristen of, of any significance or importance. And Kristen walks out of the room with the same contact lenses she walked into the room with. May not be in Kristen's best interest. Let's see if we can apply what we've just learned to Kristen and see what that looks like in your exam room. Here we go. Let's do a, another conversation with Kristen. Well, Kristen, it's been about a year since we last saw you. Your vision is about the same and your prescription hasn't changed. However, I'd like to make sure these are still the right contact lenses for you. Can you walk me through a typical day after you put your lenses in? Okay. I work in IT, so I get to work early. I put my contacts in right before I leave and they feel pretty good for a while. But I spend a lot of time looking at either my computer or my phone. So how do your lenses feel at the end of the day? My contacts start to bother me by then. I keep them in though because I try to get to the gym after work. My contact lenses feel really uncomfortable by the time I take them out. So you're on digital devices for a good part of the day. Tell me more about your contact lenses feeling uncomfortable. Well, I can really feel my contacts by the end of the day. I'm ready to take them out like as soon as I get home. A lot of people experience what you describe, but what would it be like if your lenses could feel comfortable all day so you didn't have to take them out as soon as you got home? <laughs> that would be great. Sometimes I even skip the gym because I want to get home to take my contacts out. I'd try something different if you think it would work. So based on what you share with me, I'm prescribing the Bosch & Lomb Ultra for astigmatism contact lenses. This lens maintains 95% of its moisture for a full 16 hours, which will be helpful for those long days you mentioned. These lenses could be an excellent fit for your lifestyle, and by prescribing you these lenses, you should experience all-day comfort as well as consistently clear vision. Well, I'm excited to give them a try, especially if I can get clear vision and comfort all day. Who doesn't want that? Exactly. So I'm going to have one of my contact lens technicians place a pair of these lenses on your eyes so you can see for yourself. After we go over the wearing instructions, you'll be ready to try this great option for your vision. So what do you think? Was that second one better than the first one? The first interview was a little weak. The second one's pretty strong. How long did that entire second interview take? About a minute and a half. I heard someone say, yeah, about a minute and a half. So we're not asking you to take 10, 15 minutes and add it to your exam routine. We're simply saying with about a minute and a half change where you explore the unmet needs, you paint that picture of excellent vision, and then you prescribe a strong relevant solution, you can have a radical difference in the patient's performance as they leave your practice and go out into the community to talk about you. That's huge. That's something that I want to do. All right, let's do one together here. Let's see if you've actually learned the, the techniques here. So let's go to page three in your handout. Page three in your handout is a transcript of the video you're going to see with Debbie. Now what I want you to do while we go through this is I want you to circle, underline, star, anytime you hear any one of those three things that we've just learned. Questions, open-ended targeted questions for finding those unmet needs, painting that picture of excellent vision, prescribing that strong relevant solution. So use this as your tool while you listen to this all put together with Debbie. Here we go. Debbie, we have you in contact lenses that correct your distance vision and they seem to be working pretty well. You had mentioned you recently started using reading glasses. When do you find yourself reaching for your reading glasses? Tell me a little more about that. When I traveled for work, I noticed that I was having trouble reading the emails on my phone. So I got some reading glasses and now I find I put them on more than I'd like. So what's it like having to carry your reading glasses with you when you travel? It's kind of annoying to tell you the truth. I'm carrying contact solution in cases, reading glasses, regular glasses, and I really don't like having to put them on during a meeting. It's a little embarrassing. Well, that can be a lot to manage. What if you could have contact lenses designed to give you clear vision up close, 
far away and in between without having to use reading glasses as often. That would be amazing. I didn't realize there were lenses that could do that. I just assumed I needed reading glasses. I can prescribe contact lenses that may reduce your need for reading glasses. Tell me a little more about what you do in your free time so I can prescribe lenses that best fit your lifestyle. Well, I have an active lifestyle. I enjoy hiking and camping with my family. Basically, when I'm not traveling for work, I'm outside. And it's hard carrying contact solution and cases when camping. So it sounds like the less you have to carry with you, the better. I appreciate you sharing all this. And given what you've told me, I'm prescribing BioTrue one day for presbyopia contact lenses. These are multifocal contact lenses that provide clear vision close up, far away, and in between. That means you'll be able to reduce the need for reading glasses. Also, these lenses are daily disposable, so you don't have to travel with that solution. I think you'll enjoy the convenience of these contact lenses and will be happy with the results. This sounds great. I had no idea there was an option out there for me. I'm looking forward to trying these. So I'm going to have one of my contact lens technicians place a pair of these lenses on your eyes so you can see for yourself. After we go over your wearing instructions, you'll be ready to try this great option for your vision. All right. What'd you learn? Somebody give me one unmet needs question that was asked. Open-ended, targeted. What did he do? One. It's right there in front of you. He's got a couple. Tell me about your lifestyle. Exactly right. Tell me about your lifestyle. Everybody in today's world has different lifestyles, so it's important for us to understand that. Somebody give me painting a picture of excellent vision. What word set did Dr. Gaddy use to paint? A picture of excellent vision. What do you think? Oh, leave the diving board. We're all loving you here. You're in a safe environment. Yes! How would you like to reduce the need for reading glasses? And you saw her response that she lit up. Yes, I would like that. And somebody give me a pres prescribing a strong, relevant solution. A statement that Dr. Gaddy said in his... Give it to me. What did he say? The direct, the bar, the there we go. Strong. Relevant for her. And he's prescribing for her. And then he prescribes... I'm prescribing, in the words that he uses, I'm prescribing BioTrue one day for presbyopia contact lenses. Strong, significant statement to her. That's good. This is stuff that you can take back. Help me, do you feel you could actually take this back and use it in your practices with your contact lens patients? Am I seeing some heads nod? Yeah, absolutely, and it will be better. Do you believe it's better for your patients if you do this? Absolutely, yes, I agree too. Good, all right. When did the eye care professional uncover that Debbie had unmet needs? When he asked. Which means if you don't ask, you don't uncover. That's an important point. Number two, how did he paint the picture of excellent vision? He, he listened to what her needs were, and then he painted the picture based on what she told him her needs were. He's tying things together, active listening. How did he set up his solution? You have these problems, I'm prescribing this solution. That's your case presentation right there in a nutshell. Help me with this, what'd you like about the conversation between Debbie and Dr. Gaddy? What'd you like about it? I like that it was conversational. Did, did any of you think it was forced? Did any of you feel uncomfortable as he's having that discussion? Or did you, could you picture in your head that that would be a conversation you'd be having with a patient and it would be a, a nice, comfortable, open conversation? I'm just trying to help you. And that's why patients come to us for help. That's what I really liked about this conversation. All right, let's take another step and say, if we've learned how to do this in the exam room, we need to think about our team. We need to think about the practice and the staff that we work with and enhance communication across staff with patients as well as doctors with staff. So let's think about that for a minute. Staff members in our practice are there to help us deliver patient care. And they're the first often to interact with patients. The face of your practice is not you. By the way, what's the number one reason that patients leave your practice and go somewhere else? Staff. 
Patients will call them and go, I love the doctor, but boy, I just don't like that receptionist, so I'm not coming back. And you're going, oh, really? You know, I just, I, staff. So we need to make sure staff gets it. Staff are often the first to address issues when patients come in. Patients will tell staff, and then we need to make sure that staff's telling us. So think about your office. Who in your office, you should be picturing a name of who the first person to touch your patients are, who's the last. And I want you to think about that. First and last is big. Disney learned that. When you go to Disney, how many of you have been to Disney, by the way? Okay. When the, when the day's over and you're dead dog tired and you're dragging yourself out to the car and all of a sudden you realize, I've got a rental. <laughs> and I'm not quite sure where I parked it. And I don't even remember what color that thing was. Have you noticed on the trams the people hanging out with their car keys just pushing, hoping something will beep somewhere? <laughs> you know, I'll find my car. Disney can tell you, based on the time that you arrived at the park, roughly where your car is. And they can do that both in Florida and in California. They've learned that if that last step in the experience at Disney isn't as same high quality as the rest, it will taint everything that happens. So we need to make sure that when our practices, we've thought about that first touch with the patient and that last touch with the patient, and we've managed that so it's positive, so the patient walks out of our practice with a positive experience wanting to go tell other people. So here's the, here's the outline I want you to remember. There is priming, means getting ready. There's the doctor in the middle, and there's reinforcing, so priming. The staff being the first touch, they prime that patient. In fact, one of the most important and most powerful things I've learned in practice management over my long career in this, in this profession is that priming the patient, setting the patient up for what's gonna happen in the exam room and in the optical is in the top three most important things that you need to do with patients. Pre-setting patients to purchase is essential that we train staff how to do it and we understand it as doctors. Then there's the handoff from staff to us and then the handoff from us generally to another staff member to complete whatever it is that we want in the optical or, or finishing up the exam for today's visit. That process, that whole process, we need to think about the whole thing all the way through and make sure that we are supporting positive communication with our patients. Now, we're not going to leave you here today without resources. So we are going to send you a bunch of resources. We're going to send you resources that will help you in practice. We're going to send you the Patient Communication Enhancement Guide. We're going to send you the videos that you watched here with Kristen and Debbie so that you can use those in your staff meetings. And we're going to send you this. My wife is also an optometrist, and, and when I went home after my first presentation for Bosch and Loma on this topic and I showed her this, she snatched it out of my hand. Normally she asks for stuff. She said, I need that. <laughs> Give that to me now. It was, a, it was an amazing thing. This is a tool your, your staff can use with patients or you can use with patients to identify where the issues are in their life. You can use a vis-a-vis -vis marker, you can use this in paper form and, and tear paper off and have that follow the patient through the practice. Lots of ways you can use this, but this is a powerful tool to help trigger your staff to ask those patients about their lifestyle, about what's going on that we can help fix in their world to make their world better. So as we think about these things, this primer, this, this priming tool that, that's up front to help us. There we go. We want to now go to the back page of our little handout. This is where you're going to apply what we've just learned. I want everybody in the room to fill the back page out. There are three simple steps here. Step one, make the commitment. I want you to make the commitment. Step two, I want you to incorporate the change in your practice. And that means that you're going to do one of the th following three things. Tell me how long you typically wear contacts, asking those open-ended targeted questions. And number three, we want you to prepare for success. Commit. Leave the diving board. I'm going to do this on my next 10 patients. I'm going to do this for the next 30 days. Pick some time frame that you're going to do it. So I'd like you to take just two minutes right now and do this. Why do I want you to do this? Because we know that people that just think about doing stuff 
don't get as much done as people who write it down. People who write things down and go back with a plan have a higher success probability than people who don't. So I'm going to give you two minutes. Conversation starter tool can be this. Can also be the targeted open-ended questions that we saw in the presentation. Both of those work. Absolutely, right there. I told you that people who just think about stuff, here's, I'm thinking about changes I'm going to make when I get back to my office, don't get as much done as people who actually write it down. People who write things down get more done than people who just think about it. Guess what? People who tell others what their plan is get the most done. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to commit to me before you leave this room, you will turn to someone in this room and share with them your, your plan for when you get back to the practice. And I want them to share with you their plan. Can I get your commitment to do that? Oh, that was weak. Can I get your commitment to do this? Yes! yes! All right. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure to talk to you. <laughs>